I'm Ben Solak, and live from God's country, Mobile, Alabama, the Reese's Senior Bowl. This is the play sheet. I wish more people knew about Mobile, Alabama, because then I could say live from the most grotesque holiday in you've ever seen. The opening script, Kyle Shanahan's deep personal suffering. The 49ers made their third NFC Championship game appearance in four years last week. And since they lost that game, they have officially made three NFC Championship games and will win no Super Bowls. The loss to the Eagles 31-7 particularly stings because it saw starting quarterback, but also third string quarterback Brock Purdy, get injured, leave the game, and then have to come back in the game when backup quarterback, but also like mid-season free agent acquisition and technically fourth string quarterback Josh Johnson also leave the game with injury. The play that Purdy got hurt on is an important one because it's one of these ones where like a tight end is blocking a really good pass rusher. And a lot of times people get upset about that and they don't like it. So I want to talk about why that happens and how it happens. Let's go to play action. Okay, this is the play that Purdy gets hurt on. We have Hassan Reddick, star pass rusher. He's got somewhere between like 900 and 10 trillion sacks this season. And he's lined up way, 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 way wide, way on the outside. And this is backup tight end Tyler Croft, right? The Niners snap the ball, they're gonna go play action. Croft's gonna be left one-on-one -on -one with Reddick. He's obviously gonna win that matchup. And then he's gonna like flying dragon Kareen. Like the Reddick's ability to finish these plays is bananas. Most defensive ends are falling over in that instance. He hits Purdy on the arm. It's rolled a fumble and the Eagles get the ball. So what's the play design? How did we end up in, in, in this awkward spot? Brock Purdy's under center. It's going to be a little play action fake to Christian McCaffrey, right? And then you're going to have Brandon Ayuk, who kind of works vertical and starts to lean in a little bit, and George Kittle, who works vertical and starts to lean in a little bit. And here's what the Niners want to present. They want to present the threat to the Eagles that one of these guys is going to run the clear out route, right? He's going to run all the way downfield in the middle, take the deep post safety with him. And then the other guy is going to run this deep crosser. And then that crosser will be open after all these linebackers get pulled up by play action. That's what they want to present. What they actually end up running, which is really cool, is they're going to have have Kittle on the crosser, and then Ayuk, instead of actually running the clear out route, is going to bend back and go into the sideline. This is a long developing route from Ayuk, but they're going to get James Bradbury, the corner, leaning on it, and Ayuk's going to open in space. The, the problem is how long it takes, right? So well, watch, just watch the receivers and watch the concept. Okay, here's Kittle and Ayuk. Ayuk fakes inside, and then he, he breaks to the outside right here. Like, this is a beautiful look. This is a 25-yard catch. If you hit him before the sideline, he can turn up field. It's a foot race, him and Marcus Epps. Like, this, this could very reasonably be a touchdown. But that's just if you're looking at the routes. Now we have to look at the protection. Because the Eagles are in this five down front, right? They got five down defensive linemen. You understand that your bigs are going to have to take all of these players here, sell the play action fake. And when Kittle releases upfield, you're going to be stuck tight end on, on Hassan Reddick. It's it's just the reality of the front that the Eagles have lined up in. This is this is what's going to happen. What you're what you're encouraged by, what you feel the reason why you feel all right with this is because as the ball snapped, once Purdy kind of gets to his landmark, look at how much width there is between Purdy and Hassan Reddick. That's a, that's a lot of room. That's more than five yards. Like this is a long, long, long road. And so what you want from your rookie quarterback is say, okay, he's gonna beat the tight end. You know he's gonna beat the tight end, but you got plenty of time because of how 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 wide that, that distance is, how long it is. And you should have the ability to step up in the pocket and make this path even tougher for Reddick to complete. But Purdy doesn't get that. And that's because while Hassan Reddick beats the tight end as expected, the the, the Niners also lose to the top of the screen. You're gonna have your Josh Sweat providing interior push. You're gonna have Javon Hargrave providing interior push. And that makes it tough for Purdy to step up, right? You see how he's just kind of bouncing on his feet? This is like, this is such a wide open target for Redick. Purdy, like a more veteran quarterback, is going to feel this. Is going to, the internal clock's gonna be going off and he's gonna realize, okay, like I'd love to sit here and hang and wait. Like Brandon Ayuk's just now breaking open. Maybe I could throw it, but I, I, I have to just run up and move into space here. I have to be late to this route. Maybe I can throw it to Kittle over the middle, but you have to feel like once this trash comes right here and, and, you're, and you're forced to just kind of wait at this much depth, you have to know that it's gonna, it's gonna open the path for Redick. And again, Redick's like at an insane body angle. The fact that he finishes this play is nuts, but Purdy here, just a little bit more veteran, a little bit more situational understanding is going to know I just got to climb the pocket. Either this ball is going to be out right now or I've got to climb. This is an important mistake from Purdy because like previously the Niners have been blocking edges with tight ends and fullbacks and leaving them unblocked and Purdy had been making quick decisions. 
here's a perfect example. This is the wild card round against the Seahawks. Purdy's on her center, and, and the Niners are going to get kind of that base concept that you expect where one guy, this time Ayuk, is on the cross, and then Ray Ray McLeod's running the clear out, right? They're going to go Purdy play action, and this time they're going to roll him out. And, and, and the rollout helps Purdy. Purdy's got really quick feet, and so it, it allows him to kind of move with pace and, and feel the tempo of the drop. But because it's play action and, and the Niners have to sell the run fake, they end up with George Kittle and Kyle Yushik on Boye Mafe, who Boye Mafe is not as good as a pass rusher as Hassan Reddick, but this is still a losing proposition. You expect to lose this matchup and Mafe is going to end up pressuring Brock Purdy. But watch Purdy get his feet flipped around, find Ayuk, and it's all, all wide open throw 25 yards down the field. This play is made successful because of the play action fake, and the play action fake is made successful because... You have to leave a tight end on an edge rusher if you're going to sell run action. That's a block that you would actually have to execute in the run, so you can't just ignore it in the passing play. The Niners have been getting away with blocking edges with tight ends for years. They've been getting away with leaving edges unblocked for years. This is, again, this is going to be a, a touchdown game ceiling touchdown against the Seahawks in the wildcard round. I mean, they just don't block Boye Mafe, right? It's it's threaten the run action here. This is all outside zone rushing, and we would just leave this end unblocked if we were actually tossing the football. We're not, but we have to sell that we are. So we're going to leave him unblocked. And now it's Purdy understanding, hey, when you get out of this rollout, you're going to be one-on-one -on -one with space with Boye Mafe. And you have to be able to read out the defense and make the throw. And in this case, the Seahawks bust and Debo Samuel is going to be wide open. Again, watch Purdy's feet. Watch how quickly he flips his hips, gets the ball out. And then it's a huge catch and run for Debo Samuel. So the Niners, they, they do this, man. A, the, a huge tenant of the offense is faking the run and getting to play action. So it's tough. Purdy is a rookie quarterback playing in the NFC Championship game. Hostile environment, Philadelphia. Hassan Reddick's an unbelievable finisher. The fact that he stays upright and he's able to get to Purdy is bananas. But a more veteran quarterback, hopefully, a quarterback with better pocket presence, understands, okay, I'm waiting on Ayuk. I'm waiting just a little bit too long. I have to climb up in this pocket. I have to move off the route. Otherwise, I'm going to get hit. Those are the little margins of NFL offenses, of NFL plays. It goes badly, and we say, why did Kyle Shanahan block a defensive end with a tight end? That's ridiculous. It goes well, and we go, wow, Kyle Shanahan schemed up a wide-open Brandon Ayuk 30 yards down the field. All a difference of like a half second. Now, injuries are freaky things. They happen all the time. And independent of the wisdom of the play design, how it went down, Purdy is hurt. And that makes a confusing 49ers quarterback situation like way more confusing. So... Let's start with the lay of the land. Longtime starting quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, who played like the middle section of this past season. He's not under contract for 2023. The Niners might want him back in the sense that they know him. And yeah, he's coming off of a foot injury, but he's healthy and he's putting weight on it. And it's likely he's going to be good for the 2023 season. But they've been trying to replace this guy for a bit. And he's not under contract. So that's Jimmy. Then there's Trey Lance, right? He's the guy they drafted to replace Jimmy. And because they drafted him super early to replace Jimmy, of the current quarterback options on the Niners roster, Lance by far has the most resources invested into him. The Niners traded multiple first round picks to move up in the 2021 draft. They drafted Lance with the third overall selection. And that means that Lance is due $9.3 million this upcoming season and $10.8 million the next season. Brock Purdy, in comparison, is due less than $1 million. Despite the fact that the Niners like have the most eggs in the Lance basket, like financially speaking, he's only ever started four games over the first two years of his career. And critically, he's coming off a major injury of his own. Lance broke and dislocated his ankle in week two of this season and had surgery on it. And then this past December had a second cleanup surgery on it, which is like never a great thing. There was a report this past week that Lance is expected to be 100% for OTAs. And that's great because Lance needs reps and he needs a chance to like still win the job. And then last, but certainly not least, you have the sensation, Brock Purdy. Purdy went 7-0 as the starter for the 49ers. He was one game away from playing in the Super Bowl. He saved the Niners season, but he got hurt. And the scale of that injury is still a question. Brock Purdy hurt his ulnar collateral ligament, his UCL, which is an elbow ligament that like best case scenario is going to require six months to heal. That would put him back healthy like sometime in August, training camp preseason, maybe enough time to ramp up for the actual regular season. But Purdy is still getting opinions on the UCL injury, and there's a chance that it's going to require Tommy John surgery. And the thing about Tommy John surgery is that it does not have six months recovery. It's at least a year. Purdy could realistically, depending on reports as they come out, not be available as a quarterback for the 49ers in 2023. So here's our big question. What do the 49ers do 
Well, firstly, you got to wait and see what the results of Purdy's evaluation and his surgery are, right? If he's actually legitimately able to be healthy in August and, and play out and battle in training camp, then you can go into camp with Lance and with Purdy. You have two young quarterbacks. They're super cheap, which is a nice competitive advantage. You can fill out the rest of your roster and then you see who wins. And that's probably going to be Purdy because he was just playing really, really well. But whatever, you can actually go in and earnestly have that battle. If the Niners go into the offseason with Purdy and with Lance, it's important to remember that when Shanahan traded up for Lance, he did so with visions of changing the offense, right? He wanted to bring more mobility and more creativity to the quarterback position than he was getting with Garoppolo. Now, he planned to do that with Lance. And while you like look at Trey Lance and you look at Brock Purdy and they look totally different and you would assume they have different play styles, they actually really don't. And that's why some of those previous clips that we saw were important. One of the best things that Purdy does is move. He's a nimble guy. He's got quick feet. He brings some of the mobility and creativity that Shanahan was hunting. This season, 20% of Purdy's dropbacks ended up outside of the pocket, whether by design or on scrambles. That's more than double the rate that Jimmy Garoppolo had this year. Purdy officially scrambled. He tucked the ball and crossed the line of scrimmage on 4% of his dropbacks. Garoppolo was less than 1%. And as we broke down in our video on Purdy's debut against the Buccaneers, subscribe to the play sheet. It took him like one game to throw as many touchdown passes deep and outside the numbers as Garoppolo had in the past two seasons. Purdy is aggressive. He likes to challenge coverage. So while Purdy can give Shanahan some of the creativity that he was looking for, he does lack the elite physical tools that Lance does. And if Purdy has to miss that 2023 season off of Tommy John surgery, then Trey Lance will have the opportunity to compete for and probably win the starting job in 2023 that was handed to him to begin 2022. We also broke down that film from Lance's start in 2022. Subscribe to the play sheet. It's still too early to say for Lance if he's going to be emphatically good or emphatically bad. There are encouraging signs, but again, he's only started four games in the NFL. He's only 22 years old, which makes him one year older than CJ Stroud and Bryce Young, younger than Will Levis, the top quarterbacks that'll be selected in the 2023 draft. It's okay that Lance is still figuring out this NFL quarterback thing, but the Niners had hoped that Lance would have figured it out by now because their team is ready now. The offense is loaded with stars. The defense had a star defensive coordinator in D'Amico Ryans, but they lost him. He's now the head coach of the Houston Texans. So San Francisco can't really just indefinitely tread water waiting for Lance to become the quarterback that they always hoped he'd be. So what's left then? If you can't push all your chips in on Lance and Purdy's not available, you have to go get a veteran, but who? Tom Brady? Not available. He retired. Actually, this time, we, we really believe him. Aaron Rodgers might be available via trade, and the Niners have explored that previously, but you're going to have to compete with a tough market for that and rustle up the money for him. The issue with the Brock Purdy run and, you know, multiple seasons of Jimmy Garoppolo play is that it reminds us that nobody in the league, nobody in the league is better at elevating quarterback play, at getting a solid offense out of just any quarterback play style or caliber of play than Shanahan is. It's a gift, but it's also a curse. It means that there's little utility in the Niners like going and getting Derek Carr. That doesn't do anything for them. Shanahan could put me at quarterback and get 11 wins out of an offense. Why does he need to pay Derek Carr like a second tier quarterback contract to get largely the same thing? The 49ers quarterback situation plain and simple, sucks. It's the worst. This is quarterback purgatory and confusion and injury nightmare unlike anything we've ever really seen. There is no way of guaranteeing that the 49ers are going to have a cheap, healthy, competent option at quarterback in 2023, which puts them at the forefront of the quarterback market. They pretty much have to do something. They have to go get a big splash. If not, it's Josh Johnson season all over again. Thank you, as always, for watching The Play Sheet. This is our third installment in an accidental, unplanned series about San Francisco 49ers quarterbacks. If you like the show, you subscribe to the show. You watch the show next week because we're going to preview the Super Bowl, and then you subscribe to the show even harder. It's going to be awesome.